This was the overall picture of how this worked, but we still were abstracting some things by just saying, you know, you set an address to 1000 and you set to read four bytes and you send it to here and somehow it just works. So let's enhance and understand this spy bar memory mapped IO registers better. So in the data sheets, you will find this description, spy bar plus offset, and these are the lists of the various registers. There are registers both for hardware sequencing and software sequencing. So those are the two forms of access I was talking about. Hardware sequencing, you just let the hardware figure out what it means to read and write. And software sequencing, you give the exact spy flash opcodes for the particular chip or part that you're dealing with in order to go beneath the abstraction. At this point, I would point out that there's probably a uh, typo here and that the HSFSTS and HSFCTL, etc. The you know they're saying status here and control there, but uh, more often than not in the data sheets, it's just re referred to as HSFS, etc. So whatever, it's just in this five series data sheet. So later on, I'll probably refer to things as HSFS dot blah, and uh, that's this is just to not confuse you. So that was for the ICH 9 and 10, PCH 5 through 9. And unfortunately, the names and locations of registers slightly shifts around between the 9 series PCH and the 100 series PCH. So I'm going to basically be flipping back and forth between these data sheets just so that uh, depending on what you have, hopefully it'll make it easier for you to find what you need to find. So whereas the previous had, you know, hardware sequencing when there were two two byte registers, here there's a single four byte register, but for all intents and purposes, it's just those two two byte registers back to back. Now, what is the sequence that you do to read? You enter an address to read, you enter a size to read, you set the flash cycle type to read, so it says like what kind of action do you want to take? And then you check whether or not anyone's using the flash right now. So you want to make sure you have, you know, exclusive access. And if no one's using it, then you say go and start to this read cycle. Then the chip is going to, you know, take a while. We talked about how, you know, it might be running at 20 to 60 megahertz. So it's going to take a while to get the data back to you. But when it does, that data will be stored in the F data registers, 0 through N. So up to 64 bytes, 32 bits at a time. Uh, in the flash data registers. So that's a read sequence. And the write sequence is almost the same. So you enter an address to write, you enter a size to write, and then you take the data that you want to write and you put it into those flash data registers. So these data registers are used both for reads to read into there and for writes to write out from there. Then you set the cycle type to write and you make sure that BIOS write enable is one. So we'll talk about that a bit later. And as long as no one else is using the chip, then you can say go. And again, you just wait for the thing to take a while to do this write operation. And when it's finally done, there will be a status bit that says it's done. And so you just keep checking that to know when it's done. But that's the high level view. Let's dig down deeper. What exactly does it mean to enter an address to read? So if we were to look at the five series chipset, there is the F adder field at spy bar plus eight. That is the flash address. And it looks like this. There's going to be 25 bits, zero through 24, 25 bits that specify a flash linear address. And so I said before that, you know, spy as a protocol only supports 24 bit addressing. So normally you should only have access to 16 megabytes of space. But I also said that the Intel hardware allows for concatenating two spy flash chips back to back. So in this class, when we refer to a flash linear address, you can kind of think of it as if it's a concatenation of however many spy flash chips the device supports. So even though, you know, the hardware protocol may only support 24 bits, the Intel hardware recognizes, oh, this address is too high. I'm going to select the upper chip instead of the lower chip, and it'll just make it all work out. So that's what it looked like for the five series chipset. Now let's flip the page to a 100 series chipset. Here it is again at offset eight. It is the flash address and here it's called BIOS F adder. And basically it'll look exactly the same as the other one. You've got some number of bits that specify a flash linear address. Although interestingly this time it appears to be 27 bits. 
So this again tells us that Intel is doing something a little non-standard here and somehow allowing you to either access larger spy flash chips or and or the concatenation of you know more spy flash chips. Okay, that was how we enter an address to read. Now we need to enter a size to read. So how do we do that? Well, on the 5 series chipset at offset 6 is this 2-byte register, the hardware sequencing flash control register. And inside of that, at bits 8 to 13, there is the flash data byte count. And this has a little bit of an interesting encoding here. So basically, there's, you know, six bits here. And zero would say, I want to, you know, if you set all bits to zero, it would say, I want to read a single byte. And if you set all bits to one, that would say, I want to read 64 bytes. And instead of just saying how many bytes you want to read, you specify it using some number of bits. All right, now, same thing on the 100 series chips set. Offset four is this four byte register. And it's basically the exact same thing. We've got the flash data byte count at offset 24, it's again six bits, and it has the same encoding. So zero represents that you want one byte, and three F, or all ones, indicates that you want 64 bytes to be read in or written out. So that's how we set a size to read. Now let's figure out how you set the flash cycle type to read. Once again, back to the hardware sequencing flash control register at offset six. There is at bits one and two, two bits, and if they're set to zero, that says you're gonna do a read. If they're set to one zero, that says you're gonna do a write, and one one means an erase. Erase on spy flash chips, specifically NOR spy flash chips, which is what these are, and they're implemented with NOR gates of transistors. Spy erases will actually set all bits equal to one. So it's an interesting property of the way that spy NOR flash chips work that you can never actually directly set a zero to a one when you're writing to this non-volatile memory. You can set a one to a zero when you're writing, but you can't set a zero to one. The only way to set a zero to one is to do an erase. And so generally there's some block granularity, you know, for instance, four kilobytes, 64 kilobytes, and basically software that wants to, you know, truly set an arbitrary value into uh, the spy flash and not just flip ones to zeros. If you want to set a truly arbitrary value, you have to read the value that's there, erase everything so that it all becomes ones, and then write back the value that you want so that any ones get flipped to zeros and you end up with the correct final value. So anyways, flash cycle read is zero zero in this spy bar plus six HSFC register. Now, looking at the 100 series chipset offset four, again, this combo, two of registers all combined, and it is the same sort of thing, F cycle, but now we see it's four bits instead of two bits. So that means that Intel extended it and added extra support for things. So read is still zero, write is still two, and erase is now a four kilobyte block erase, but it also supports things like 64 kilobyte block erase and other stuff that we don't actually care about. All right, now I'm going to skip over briefly this, you know, check that no one's already using it, and I'm just going to go right to go. So we'll come back to that when we hit that register for other reasons. So normally you would check if anyone's using it before you say go, but for now let's just assume you're doing it wrong and you just say go. So how do you say go? How do you say execute my read transaction for reading these, this number of bytes from that particular flash linear address? Well, to do that, you use the hardware sequencing flash control register offset 6. And we've already seen this for the flash data byte count, the flash cycle type, and now at bit zero is flash cycle go. So once everything's all set up, you set flash cycle go to one, and that says go ahead and do whatever kind of cycle was programmed here, whatever number of bytes was programmed there, and whatever address was programmed in the flash address register. Flipping to the 100 series chipset, same thing hardware sequencing flash status and control, and there's just an FGO bit, which is at bit 16. Okay, then the next step is to wait until the status says it's done. So we said before, spy is slow, so you just have to kind of poll and find out whether it's done. So where do you poll? Now we are going to look at the hardware sequencing flash status register. We've been looking at the control predominantly in the flash address. Now let's talk about the status. So the status register is what tells you when it's done. 
So the hardware will automatically set this bit to one to indicate it's done doing whatever type of flash cycle you just told it to do. And once it's done, you might want to check whether or not there was an error because it might say it's done, but there was an error and then you're not going to be reading valid data. And while we're here, this is actually where you would check whether or not the hardware is currently in use. Makes sense, flash status register, check whether there is a spy cycle in progress. So basically the hardware sets this when someone says go and then it's continuously set until it says the hardware is done. So basically the hardware is saying, you know, nope, don't access this, I'm currently doing something. And then when it's done, it unsets this and it sets the flash done bit. And once more, over to the 100 series chipsets, and it's the same sort of thing with F done at bit zero, same interpretation as before, F error at bit one, same interpretation as before, and the cycle in progress bit at bit five, same interpretation as before. Now, last but not least, if you're actually reading data in, you gotta find out where the data went. And so to do that, you look at the flash data registers. So the five series data sheet shows it like this, that at offset spy bar plus 10, there's flash data zero, and at offsets spy bar plus 14 through 4F are the flash data N registers. So flash data zero, this is literally just 32 bits of data that was read in from the spy flash chip. So nothing particularly interesting there. And then there's just all the rest of these extra registers that have the exact same function. They're just data holding registers. So if you said, you know, I want 64 bytes of data, then all of these would be filled in. If you said I want four bytes of data, then actually none of these would be filled in, but the spy bar plus 10 flash data zero would be filled in, right? So however much data you ask for gets put into these registers. And in the 100 series chipset, it shows that all up front at the sort of uh, spy bar overall register summary view. And there's nothing particularly interesting about that once more. It is just the exact same interpretation of 32 bits of data that you read in from the device. So that is digging deeper into how exactly you interface with this memory mapped I.O. in order to cause flash cycles to, for instance, read in this case. But you could see how you could do a write very similarly by just setting the flash site cycle type to write and writing data into the flash data registers before you start the cycle.